This morning, South Florida is still cleaning up and drying out from what the National Weather Service calls a one-in-1,000-year flood event. Fort Lauderdale was swamped with more than two feet of water, causing devastating flooding, closing a key airport for days and turning roads into rivers. The city was soaked by seven months' worth of rain in just a seven-hour stretch. Joining me now is Dr. Michael Mann, professor of Earth and Environmental Sciences at the University of Pennsylvania. He's also the author of the book, The New Climate War, and the upcoming book, Our Fragile Moment, How Lessons from Earth's Past Can Help Us Survive the Climate Crisis. Dr. Mann, it's always a pleasure to have you. Let's talk about these one in 1,000 year weather events. They seem to be happening all across the country and at more alarming rates. Are we witnessing firsthand how global warming and other climate changes are increasing the intensity of these kinds of storms? Yeah, thanks, Katie. It's great to be with you. And the short answer is yes. Um, you know, we 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 toss around these uh, terms like thousand-year event, um, and it makes it sound like, well, okay, it, it was just really bad luck. That's not what it means. When we say this was a thousand-year event, um, means we shouldn't have witnessed it if we lived for a thousand years. Um, Methuselah of biblical fame should not have witnessed uh, an event of this sort. Um, the only reason we're witnessing it is because it's no longer a thousand years uh, event. It's maybe a five or ten year event. So what we're doing is we're taking uh, extremes that were so unlikely they should have happened in a thousand years, and we're now warming the planet and changing the sort of the incidence of these extreme weather events in such that they become now common occurrences, whether it's this thousand year event uh, down in uh, Florida, which is now, you know, the sort of thing we can expect to see uh, frequently, or the fact that it was 96 degrees uh, in Hartford, Connecticut yesterday, or the Pacific Northwest heat dome event that we heard about a couple summers ago when it was warmer in Southwest Canada than it usually is in Phoenix, Arizona in the middle of the summer. The only reason we are seeing such extreme weather events is because of the the fact that we've warmed up the planet, we've put more moisture in the atmosphere. So, for example, when you get these rainfall events, they produce a lot more of that rain, and they give us extreme flooding like this case. You know, with some positivity, Dr. Mann, you argue that all is not lost in the battle against climate change, but you do say that placing the blame on human behavior is misguided. It's a, actually a result of a multi-million dollar marketing campaign by fossil fuel industries, corporations, and frankly, the politicians that they're supporting. Your upcoming book is going to focus on surviving the climate crisis. What can we do to combat climate denialism and to get people to stop sticking their heads in the sand about this critical issue? Yeah, thanks for that question, Katie. You know, what we need to do is recognize, and, and it's a simple, you know, phrase that I use over and over again today, we, there is urgency, we need to act now, but there is agency, it's not too late to act. And the science tells us that. Uh, if we look to the past, um, we see that in past climate episodes, there's a certain amount of resilience in Earth's climate. Um, and that means that we can still prevent catastrophic level, levels of warming if we bring carbon emissions down uh, dramatically in the years ahead. But if we don't do that, if we continue headlong uh, down this path, this course of fossil fuel burning and ever higher levels of carbon pollution in the atmosphere, we will exceed our adaptive capacity as a civilization. So it's up to us. Um, there is a shrinking window of opportunity, a shrinking window uh, where we can bring those carbon emissions down fast enough to avert catastrophic warming of more than uh, two degrees uh, three degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, but that window is shrinking, and we need to act now. Doctor, I got 30 seconds, but I do want to ask you quickly about urban development. How much of that is factoring into the type of flooding, for example, that we're seeing in South Florida and elsewhere across the country? Yeah, this is really important because it, it really brings up one of the primary issues that we're dealing with here, which is uh, climate justice. Uh, the fact is that people who live in those flood prone, low-lying zones, or in the areas of the cities um, where there's the worst urban heat island and they see the, 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 the greatest amounts of heat stress in the summer, invariably, those are minority communities, underserved communities, people with the least resources to deal with that threat. And what that means is that climate change is an ethical obligation on our part. Dr. Michael Mann, as always, you bring such insight. We appreciate you taking the time to join us, and we appreciate you being with us. Thank you so much.
Uh, thank you. Always a pleasure.